Good morning, good afternoon, good night, pretty much, how the hell are ya? Why, hello there, and welcome back. You know, actually, I should welcome myself back. I know it's been a minute, and I have not posted for a while. I do apologize for that, but I am back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a special bike, the Suter MMX 500 V4. Now, before we talk about this bike, we need we need to talk about its creator. Pascal Suter was a former GP road racer. Born in Switzerland, Suter finished second place in the 1991 250cc International Lightweight Class at the Daytona International Speedway. His best seasons was from 1994 to 1996 when he finished 13th place. Suter was a development rider for the Munes team and they used a Swiss auto engine in a French made rock frame. When the regular rider, Rabanio, was injured in the second race of the season, Suter took over and scored points in three races. Suter Racing Technology, SRT for short, was founded in 1996 and they specialized in project engineering applied in motorcycle racing. Suter developed, in cooperation with Swiss Auto, the Muse 500 bike, in particular the chassis and design concept for the 1999 season. The company also helped develop the Kawasaki ZX RR MotoGP between 2004 and 2006. In 2010, with the introduction of the new 600cc Moto2 class in MotoGP, Suter Racing Technology started providing a chassis to the category. In 2012, Suter claimed its third consecutive manufacturing championship and claimed its first rider championship with Marc Marquez to become Moto2 world champion. Now, why am I telling you all this? Because you need this context. You need this back story. Uh, you, you, you need to know who is responsible, what do they do, and how did they get to where they are now. In all of racing history, there has never been a 500 two-stroke fully specced road race machine available to the public. Only a small quantity of factory machines were pr produced and leased to GP race teams. So almost none of these bikes ever reached the open market. Usually with, you know, uh, when a factory is providing a motorcycle for a satellite team, at the end of their contract, that bike is going back to the factory because I, it has so much technology that's uh, as far as advanced as regular road machines that they don't want that technology to get out. Uh, it's very secretive and it's very serious. You don't, uh, that those bikes will go back to the factory. So, so the select few that can actually afford this bike has been given the chance to own something that resembles their uh, posters that they had on the wall. I know I'm currently looking at a few posters on my wall that has some of the most iconic 500cc two-stroke machines to come from MotoGP. And if you're in the position to afford this bike, then you have a chance to be able to ride this thing. Now, it's not street legal, but this is a road racing V4 two-stroke. I don't know how I can uh, translate the emotions that I have inside of me through this microphone, but God, it's so, so good. I mean, what is better than that? It's a two-stroke V4 monster of a bike. Now, if you have not seen the Unridables, it's a great film on how the 500cc era of motorcycle racing were some of the scariest and some of the most ridiculous bikes to ride. They were not fun. I mean, I'm sure some of you know the CR500. It's a legendary bike, it's iconic, and it's also scary as hell. The power band between those bikes are between around nine and a half to 12,000. Right around there, you get everything. That's a two-stroke for you. It has that type of characteristics. Now, let's just give some spec on this motorcycle. So the engine on this bike is a 90-degree V4 two-stroke, 576cc beast of a bike. 
also sporting a double counter rotating crankshaft. So similar to some of the Ducatis, the new newer Ducatis, where the crankshaft actually turns in the opposite direction. With a bore and stroke of 56 millimeters by 58.5, with a max power output of 195 horsepower at 13,000 RPM. Do you realize how much power that is? Not only should you be taking this bike seriously, but that is a lot of power. It only weighs 280 pounds and it's producing nearly 200 brake horsepower. I don't think you could find anything on the current market available to the public that would be producing those kind of numbers. Uh, I can't imagine what this bike might feel like. And from all the reviews that I've seen and uh, people uh, riding them, it doesn't seem like they any of them really get on it because w whether it be they're scared or uh, the weather that they're riding it is not uh, is not the best. It's not adequate. But 200 brake horsepower, 280 pound wet weight is near incredible for power to weight ratio. So the engine is uh, powerful as can be. Now let's talk about exactly how did they reach a 220 uh, wet weight, as you could say. Well, uh, that's why I gave you the backstory of Moto2. They are champions when it comes to Moto2. And Moto2, like I mentioned, you provide uh you're provided an engine but then everything else is left up to you now some may say oh well all you have to do is just make a frame true but you also have to make a swing arm you have to make a wiring loom you have to figure out aerodynamics you have to figure out ecu trims you got to figure out a lot of things it's not just a frame and suitor with their frame have won championships their 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 frames are twin spar all hand tig welded uh, very very nice work I mean it, it, their swing arms are the same uh, same exact kind of concept it's all hand tig welded I mean their production is very small and limited and that kind of environment allows for top quality products to, to come out of now if all that TIG welding and handcrafted uh, frame business didn't already attract you, well, let me also let you know this. It's a fully adjustable frame. So I'm talking steering, wheelbase, height, uh, any type of adjustability that you can do with a frame, the MMX 500 does uh, allow it. Uh, that goes also with their swing arm. It's also adjustable. I mean, race-ready bike, a proper turnkey, go on the racetrack and have a hoot of a time because everything that is involved with this bike is just bred out of racing. Now, let's say you're a little bit of, uh, of an older gentleman or uh, lady. Uh, you've done well for yourself in your life, you have a successful career, and you've always had a passion for MotoGP since back in the 80s. Now, you could go ahead and try to find yourself an actual race machine, a 500 race machine from that era, and pay a lot of money for it, and have it sit in your garage, or better yet, in your house, or you can actually buy the MMX 500 not only look at it, not only put it in your house, but then actually ride it and have support if something were to go wrong or what have you. Uh, you have a company that's in business that's providing those parts. So, yeah, I mean, it's an absolute drool of a bike. So real quick, before we, uh, you know, conclude this video, I just want to mention a few other specs that you would be uh, receiving with this bike. Now, I mean, I don't think you would expect anything less than the best suspension uh, in the world. And that being, you guessed it, you're getting Olin's up front and in the rear. I don't think you would have expected anything less. What's really cool is also they offer um, O's standard alloy wheels. But, I mean, you could option for the magnesium or even better, the carbon fiber. Now... I doubt that you would spare any expense when you are specking out this bike because I don't know if I mentioned it uh, already, but this bike is costing well over a hundred thousand dollars. And if you were to ask me, uh, would I take this bike, the MMX 500, or a Super Legera? 
I would honestly say I would take the MMX 500. I think what it provides uh, is unmatched by any other manufacturers. I mean, up until now, there hasn't been really a road race ready uh, 500 plus CC two stroke available to the public. So that's why I would choose the MMX 500. I would try to ride it on the street, but hey, I don't know how long that would last. Well, boys, I think I'm going to go ahead and end the video right here. If you happen to like this video, go ahead and let me know. And please only subscribe and like if you feel that I have earned it. I am going to try to get back on a somewhat uh, consistent schedule. Maybe try to do a video a week. Anyways, with that, stay up. Two wheels down. Peace.